Welcome to the Word Room. I'm so glad you're here. We are going chapter by chapter through the entire Bible, breaking down the summary of each chapter, some key takeaways, and what it tells us about God. Today we're on Genesis chapter 22. This is the chapter where God asks Abraham to sacrifice Isaac. This tells us some very important things about God. You don't want to miss it. Let's go. All right, let's jump right into Genesis chapter 22 and our summary. So in this chapter, God tells Abraham to take Isaac to the land of Moriah and offer him as a burnt offering and a sacrifice to the Lord. Now, the land of Moriah is the land that we know as Jerusalem. So a very important key area. And he takes him up on the mountain. Uh, many scholars believe this because this ends up being a picture of Jesus, that he takes him up to Mount Calvary where, or you know, Golgotha, where Jesus was crucified. But God uh, tells him to sacrifice him, to offer him as a burnt offering, which is absolutely mind-blowing. What's even more mind-blowing is that Abraham obeys God and trusts him, and he believed that God would raise Isaac from the dead. We see this when he tells them that he and Isaac would come back from the mountain after going up there. So he believed he would come back with Isaac, that God would raise Isaac from the dead. As Abraham raised his knife to actually kill Isaac when he's there, the angel of the Lord appears and stops him. And God provides a ram caught in a thicket for Abraham to sacrifice instead, and then blessed Abraham and reassured him of the covenant. So five key takeaways from this chapter. Number one, Abraham obeyed God without question, and this test was to reveal the man of faith Abraham has finally grown to be. We've seen Abraham go on roller coasters of faith, right? We've seen him trust God to leave originally, but disobey in bringing his father in Lot. We see God, uh, we see Abraham trust God, but then uh, lie about Sarah being his wife because he didn't see trust God. Uh, didn't trust God. We've seen Abraham laugh at the promise. We've seen these waves of trust and not trust. Finally, he is to a place where God has brought him that he trusts God. And this test uh, that God put him through was to reveal to Abraham himself the amount of faith that he walked in. It was a test to reveal his faith. Second, Isaac is called the only son of Abraham during this chapter, even though Ishmael existed, because Isaac was the only son in relation to the covenant. So God was only making the covenant through the line of Isaac. He says, take Isaac, your only son, Isaac. So yeah, clearly this is an image of um, Jesus being the only son of God who was sacrificed by, um, you know, God sent his only son. So this is a very clear picture. But in this picture, um, the reason he's his only son is because Ishmael, even though Ishmael exists, he is not part of the covenant. He was the son of the flesh, as the New Testament calls him. Number three, Isaac was actually in his mid-twenties at the time of this event. So a lot of people view Isaac as a little kid. Isaac was not a child. He was in his mid-twenties at the time of this event. Um, we know this from multiple reasons um, within the text itself, but we also have Josephus, who was an early... Um, you know, first century Jewish historian who noted that Isaac was about 25 at this time. So Isaac was in his mid 20s at the time of this event. This also shows great faith on Isaac's part because he willingly accepted being tied up by Abraham, and put on the altar, and he didn't fight Abraham when he realized what was happening. And that's key. Isaac was submitted as well. Um, again, he's the son of promise. He was submitted just like Abraham. He trusted. God, he trusted his father, and Abraham trusted God. So even though once Isaac realized what was happening, he didn't fight and wrestle. Abraham was old at this point, right? So he could have easily overtaken Abraham, but he chose not to and submitted to being laid on the altar and about to die. Number four, this chapter has the first two usages of two important words in Scripture. This is the first time the word love is used in Scripture, and it's used to describe Abraham's love for his son. Isaac, whom you love, is what it says in Scripture. So this is the first time that word love is used, and it's a picture of the father's love for his son. Again, Isaac is a picture of Jesus and the father sending his son to die on the cross as a sacrifice. So in that regard, Isaac's a picture of Jesus, and the father 
um, Abraham is a picture of the father in heaven. So the idea here is that the first time love is used in scripture, it describes it's a picture of the father in heaven loving Jesus. The picture of perfect uh, love within the Trinity, which is powerful. This is also the first time the word worship is used. And uh, Abraham says, me and the boy will go up to the mountain and worship. Talking about going up to the mountain to sacrifice Isaac. The word worship was first used in scripture to talk about sacrifice. And that's very, very important that worship is not just songs or words that we sing with our mouth. Worship is giving myself, sacrificing my heart, giving my heart, giving my all to God because he is worthy of it. That's worship. And number five, God provided a ram for sacrifice, not wanting Isaac to die or be sacrificed. It wasn't God's intention or heart for humans like Isaac to be sacrificed for worship. The pagans around uh, Abraham did this, but God did not. And the purpose of this was not to actually sacrifice Isaac. The purpose in this was to test Abraham that he would be faithful to trust and obey God even in something so extreme. This was not a test to kill Isaac, but rather to reveal Abraham's faith and that he trusted God. God does not want humanity to die or be sacrificed. He wants us to live. The five things this tells us about God. Number one, he is provider. After he provides a ram caught in the thicket, Abraham says, you are the Lord that provides. In uh, in some translations, they'll say you're Jehovah Jireh. The, the actual Jehovah is just kind of a transliteration of the name of God. It would actually be Yahweh. Um, Jaira provider. So he's saying, you are the God, you are Yahweh who provides. You provide for us. You give us what we need. You provide everything that we need, which is incredible to understand that God is the supplier. He's the provider. He's the one you go to. When you are in need, he is your source. Number two, specifically, he provides a sacrifice for us. Now, this is ultimately a picture of Jesus. We couldn't live up to the law. Our sin and our depravity and our brokenness separated us from God. But God himself provided a sacrifice for us. That is powerful. Number three, he does test our faith. Now, this is one that people struggle with. God does not tempt us. The Bible says don't let anyone ever say that God tempted you. He doesn't tempt you to sin. He doesn't tempt you into evil or into wrongdoing. But he does test our faith through circumstances and things we go through. He allows certain things to test our faith. But he's not testing it as in he, you need to prove to him that you are faithful. It's different. He is testing it because in that, first of all, the New Testament tells us that the testing of our faith produces uh, patience and all these other things that it produces. But beyond the testing of our faith producing those things, testing our faith reveals to us our faith. It reveals to us when, when when you feel broken and you go through something and you remain faithful, that builds you up. It, it develops you. And so that's why we go through testing. Number four, he blesses us at the end of this. God blesses Abraham, releases blessing on him. And number five, he knows when to show up. God could have showed up at any point along the journey when Abraham first left, when they climbed the mountain, when he was tying Isaac up, when he... Um, you know, was placing Isaac on the altar, but he waited until Isaac or Abraham had the knife and was about to kill Isaac. That's when God showed up. God knows when to show up, and he, you need to trust that He will show up when it's time for Him to show up. That's important for a part of trust and understanding. Five things we learned about God. I hope you go study this chapter, dig a little deeper, comment down below what you got out of this, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>